Here you go. Here you go, John. This is yours right here. I've <laughs> heard this before. Salvation is God gifts to you. What you do with it is, is your gift back to God. What is God's greatest hope for us? Not shall perish. What is not? None. Okay? He says that he doesn't want anyone to perish, but to turn their lives around and head heavenward. Not head to hell, head to heaven. Okay? Man, I tell you what, I was heading to heaven. Oh, no. I was heading. I thought I was heading to heaven. Because I was doing good things, but not God things. You know what I mean? Yeah. There's a few definitions of the word perish. Okay? Perish is like dying. We think about dying violently. But in this context, what God is saying, it's just like watching bananas get perishing. You know what I mean? You buy really good, like we forget, eat it, and what happens? It's turned to different color. Okay? Then you say, well, I'm going to make some banana bread. I'm going to make it. Then you don't, you forget it. And the bugger, we got some really dark, dark ones. You know what I mean? That's beyond banana bread. So we have to throw it away. So this is what perishing is all about. It means another, another, um, another definition of it is to lose its normal qualities or to rot or decay. Something doesn't die immediately. It begins to die over time until death occurs, just like a banana. Our fruit of the Spirit is a good example. But God says that we are made from... Okay, he says, for you have been born again, not of perishable seeds, but imperishable seeds. We will stay, okay? We'll stay vital. We'll stay powerful. We'll stay vital. We'll be, continue to thrive. Why? Because God, we are born from God's imperishable seed through living and enduring through God's Word. If you do God's Word, you will stay vital. You will stay healthy. You will stay thriving. Okay, that's really important. Another translation said, you have been born again, but not to a life that will quickly end. Your new life will last forever because it comes from the eternal living Word of God. When we begin to perish spiritually, the qualities of the fruit of the Spirit loses its normal qualities. It starts to decay. It starts to rot. God doesn't want us to perish, to decay. He wants us to keep our hope alive and growing stronger every day. And the only way to keep our hope, our hope alive and thriving is to remain committed to God and to live according to His Word continually. John 15 says, 8, 5 and 8 says, Yes, I am the vine and you are the branches. Those who remain in me and I in them will produce much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. For apart from me, you can do nothing. But if you remain in me and my words remain in you, you may ask anything you want and it will be granted according to his will. When you produce much fruit, you are my true disciples that brings great glory to my Father. In other words, the gifts and talents that you're using, you're using it okay, to reach other people for Christ. You're using it for God's glory. You're using it for His purposes. When you do that, God will, God will strengthen your faith and your hope. And you will produce much fruit. And number three, focus on the eternal. Place your trust in Christ alone. Remember that song, in Christ alone, I place my trust. And find my power, at, no, I find my glory at, in, at the power of the cross. And that's really important, is in Christ alone. Give you your hopes and dreams. Rooted in Christ alone gives you peace and joy for each day. God will give you a portion, not for next week, just for each day. From glory to glory, day after day. Some of us want to hoard all of our blessings in the future. God doesn't do that. Why do you think God gives you only 24 hours a day? You cannot handle 48. Why do you think God doesn't tell you, can give you all the details about your future? Why? Because most of you give up. But if He give you enough peace and glory and mercy for today, this is the day the Lord has made. We will give you, He okay, will give you joy to endure okay, the challenges of this day. How many of you can trust God for at least one day? Just one day. Then the next day, just one more day, Lord. But after a while, inch by inch, everything is a cinch. So that's important. Psalms 33, 20 and 22 says, We put hope in the Lord. He is our help and our shield. In Him our hearts rejoice. 
for we trust in his holy name. Let your unfailing love surround us. Lord, our hope is in you and you alone. Now that's important. When it's all said and done, where do we go from here? I look at our lives and I'm just praying this morning. I says, Lord, okay, I was speaking to some young pastors and uh, I look at them like this, jeez. Some of them are 50 years older than them. And they're complaining about their ministries. <laughs> Pack the lunch, bro. It's going to be a long one. <laughs> Amen. I tell them, you know, I just turned 70. They look at me, how did you, how, how, how long, how come you last so, so long? Will it give up already? He says, in Christ alone. <laughs> Praise my it's all about God, one day at a time. In the winter of my, my ministry, God has given a new vitality. When people are still are, are retiring, God has given this, me another assignment. I said, God, how come? He said, because you, you're staying usable. How many, want, how many of you want to be used by God? Stay usable. Go before me and say, God, use me. Use me, Lord, whatever. Okay? It ain't over yet. Amen? That's really important that you will understand it. What a God we have. And how fortunate we are to have Him. His Father of our Master Jesus. Because Jesus was raised from the dead. been given a brand new life. And if everything to live for. Including a future in heaven. And the future starts when? Now. Okay? Eternity starts now. Okay? That's important. Eternity starts now. God is keeping careful watch over us and the future. When does the eternity start? Now. Okay? It is easy to look around the world and, and, and have reason not to have hope. You listen to the fake news, you think it is and that, everything going to hell and hell. But are you going to oh really? A lot of people don't okay? remember this bad news sells. Do your homework. Verify before you vote. You know what I mean? And it's really important. Everything is anti this and anti that and anti this. You think, you know what? The end of the world is here. No. Each day God's mercies are new every morning. His promises are true. Okay? We have a reason for hope because God's word is clear. Okay? Our future is secure. No matter what you're going through, you're going to see me forever. I'm going to be your neighbor forever. Can you hear it, amen? God, that was weak, you guys. <laughs> yeah, you're weak. Keith could be your neighbor forever. Oh, no, Lord. Oh, no. There's no purgatory, by the way. You know what I mean? Okay? We are going to be forever family, forever. Start enjoying your future now, your eternity now. Hey, this is just a dress rehearsal for heaven. That's really important that you understand that. God guarantees your future. You can never lose your salvation. God has written the final chapter in your life already. You can place, okay, you can place all you hope. Put everything on the line and let it roll, baby. Why? Because it's going to come out a winner for you. Okay, so what does Hawaiian style? That's what I shared with you. It begins at the beginning of the message. We going to be forever, Ohana. That's what it means. We can come in your house and say, "How's it?" Okay, no pilikia. Okay, we're gonna have, we're gonna love each other, and we're gonna be with each other forever. And that's important. Our final destination is heaven. We are God's Ohana, and you know what God wants? He wants us to Hanai people. And invite them to join us in our forever. I want you to watch this. It's just a three minute and 40 second okay, YouTube that I watch. And just so encourage me. And I'll come back for a couple minutes. Watch this. Happy heaven. It's not what you think. Most people typically think of heaven in one of two ways. Either it's a place with a bunch of angels with wings playing harps. And an old guy with a white beard. Where they're all hanging out on a bunch of clouds. Or... It's a place where everyone's worshiping Jesus 24-7, singing, Holy, Holy, Holy is the Lord God Almighty. But these people have a hidden fear they'll eventually get bored with worshiping Jesus for a billion years. Well, when you really dig deep, you'll find that neither of these portrayals are what the Bible actually says about heaven. 
nor are they what the earliest Christians believed. The Bible says heaven will eventually be on a renewed earth. Yeah, you heard that right. A renewed or recreated earth as part of the new heavens, new earth terminology used throughout Scripture. So this renewed and redeemed universe will occur when Jesus returns to make all things new and permanently removes the stain of sin which corrupted his originally good creation. Most scholars believe heaven on this new earth will have a great capital city with buildings, art, music, and lots of people fellowshipping and engaging in productive activities, as we'll be able to use the skills we acquire during our lives on earth and even learn new skills in heaven. The new earth will be a beautifully renewed and redeemed earth, completely healed from its brokenness and decay. It will have trees, rivers, and mountains. And of course, there will be no more sorrow, crying, mourning, pain, sin, or death, but only perfect peace, beauty, love, wholeness, and a permanent sense of complete fulfillment and joy. But before I go any further, I need to clarify something. The heaven we would go to if we died right now is not the permanent heaven on the new earth where we will live forever. The intermediate heaven is where we are immediately present with Christ when we die, but eventually we will be a part of the permanent heaven when we receive our resurrected and imperishable bodies and live on the new earth in our new bodies. And that will be when Jesus returns to the earth to make all things new. See, the word heaven is by definition the place where God lives on his throne. So the Bible tells us that this ultimate heaven will be the place where the dwelling place of God comes down out of heaven and onto a renewed earth. Even Christ's name as Emmanuel is symbolic here as it means God with us. He's not going to snatch us away from his creation, which he originally said was good, but he will actually finish the redemption process and renew and redeem his good creation back to the way it was always supposed to be before sin corrupted it. So, if we were to die right now, it is true we will go to heaven and be with Christ in a spiritual place without suffering. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. That's what the Bible says. But that heaven is not where we will live forever. That intermediate heaven is not purgatory either, which is a false doctrine. But think of it as a place of waiting. A waiting for Jesus to return to his creation and make all things new. But during this waiting period, many scholars believe time itself will probably seem to fly by as we wait for Jesus to return. So just like Jesus was buried in the tomb, but was quickly resurrected on the third day, we too will eventually be resurrected in new bodies to live on the new earth in the permanent heaven when Jesus returns to make all things new. Earth is not our home. So we're citizens of heaven. We're just passing through. We're aliens here. Oh, my. Isn't it exciting when you understand that? We started off in heaven. Okay, God, okay, God sent us to earth through uh, our, our okay, birth of our mothers. Okay, that's really important. Okay, and when we're going back home where we belong, it's going to be something familiar to us. Why? Because that's where we started off. So this is like a, life is like a laboratory right now. Okay, God is forming us, okay, and he's giving us gifts and passions that we'll be using in heaven. Okay, again, our time on earth is just a blink of an eye, a vapor, God says. We'll be spending eternity, and this is going to be exciting. I know I'm so excited about that, is that death has no sting anymore, amen? amen. Why? Because death is a promotion. So when you take a look at those things, it's okay. Say, they give me your best shot, bro. Why? Because I'm going to be with my forever family. People, again, are not looking for super Christians who can quote Bible scriptures from memory. Who have perfect church attendance. So it gives a lot of money. And I take a look at that. People are not looking for perfect examples of Christ. They're looking for imperfect people. There is no such thing as a perfect person. It's a unicorn. It doesn't exist. There's no little pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. What are people looking for are just real Christians just like you and me being transformed to be more like Jesus through Jesus' love and mercy and His grace. 
Real people like you and me, all bus up. Anybody belong to the bus up ministry, right? Everybody raise your hands, right? We're all dinged up. We're all broken people, but God will use the broken people and put it together again to use for His glory, if you are willing. That's what's important, okay? Again, people want true hope, not hype. Invite them to join you at Christmas service. That's what's important. Okay, some people will only come to church twice a year. At the end of the year, this is it. Okay, invite them. Okay, if they say no, that's okay. Dust your sandals off and look for another yes. But some people say no, we'll show up. I didn't. <laughs> Why? Because I was so prideful. Okay, miracles happen in the presence of Jesus. The greatest miracle in the world is their salvation. All else is, is manini compared to this. We are saved for eternity. We are not going to hell. This heaven we're going to. A future and a hope. What people need is simply a gift of simply Jesus. There's no other gift greater than him. So we need to pray for a Christmas service. And pray for a spirit of invitation. None shall perish. Let's pray. Father, we just thank you for this time.